Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, start uh, by saying if you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, if you believe in what I've done over the last 30 years, what I present, uh, the message that I deliver, the work that I do in the community, look in the description box and see how you can support that work. Your, your support is needed and necessary. Okay, um, I don't have a whole lot of time, so I am going to try to broach this topic as succinctly as I possibly can. Um, I'm, I'm going to start by saying that uh, the common adage that knowledge is power is actually not correct. Um, knowledge is potential and it has potential to be power, power uh, to produce power, to create power, uh, to develop power as an individual, as a collective, uh, organizationally, uh, and a number of different ways. But in and of itself, knowledge is simply potential. Uh, it's necessary. It's a necessary element and component of power. But in order for knowledge to actually create power, it has to be effectively applied. It has to be put into an actionable form. Uh, there are a lot of people who possess knowledge. There's a lot of people who consume it um, and acknowledge it. Uh, but what I can tell you, one of the biggest problems that we have as a collective is the fact that we do not take the knowledge and apply it. Number one is we have a problem with effectively acquiring and uh, consuming knowledge, number one. But we also have a problem with adequately applying it when we do have it. And that is in and of itself a big part of why we consistently end up in last place. Uh, we are struggling in the realm of education. Our children in the public education system are being exploited, misused. I've uh, gone to great details with books like my 16th book, uh, The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, my 24th book, Academic Apartheid, um, and it is at a level that's unbelievable. We are dealing with uh, a big problem internally. You've heard me talk about the African uh, proverb that says if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. Um, the enemy on the outside is our greatest problem. Yes, we have a problem with police brutality. We have a problem with discrimination. We have a problem with mass incarceration. We have a problem uh, with the political exploitation. And I can go on and on in the ways that we're struggling. We are in last place in every socioeconomic category uh, worth measuring. Um, and it's by design. It's literally engineered that way. And because we don't take the knowledge that we are given, um, and we don't apply it, and we don't give it the level of importance it needs. We have fewer and fewer people really truly seeking it. Um, we have fewer and fewer people that are willing to invest their life's work, their hard energy, effort, time, and resources into procuring this information, processing this information, and ultimately disseminating it in some form because it's not given value, it's not respected. Uh, we often malign our scholars, our uh, intellectuals. We often dismiss them. We look for ways to discredit them. Uh, we do everything we can uh, against our own. If we put half the energy into taking what is given to us or going out and spending energy, effort, and time and finding it ourselves, if we give that type of energy and commitment and focus to uh, developing ourselves and becoming uh, collaborative 
and our energy and our efforts instead of competitive, that's absolutely nothing that can stop us. But because we don't, we end up in last place. We have some brilliant children, but they are being bombarded by messages that's, that misdirect them, that challenge, uh, that challenges the sense of who they are. So we deal with a massive identity crisis. That's why I'm always pushing proper socialization. Why? Because our children are struggling with who they are. They're struggling with their identity. They're struggling and searching for what they are, who they are. Uh, and it is problematic. And unfortunately, we don't look at it. I have spent decades analyzing data, peer reviewing research, conducting my own research, and then through books, through articles, through published work uh, academically, through lectures, through workshops, um, through thousands of videos posted all over social media, I've disseminated my findings. Uh, you're not going to find people who can effectively and from an informative perspective challenge it because I put in the work. What I'm talking about, I know. And what I'm telling you, the things that we're putting forth work. Now, here's the problem. Anything that works will not get the major backing of any part of the power structure. Why? Because the power structure benefits from our failures. The power, power structure benefits from our impotence. The power structure benefits from us not knowing who we are. Uh, can we literally uh, make a massive impact as a nation on poverty, on homelessness, on all these things we see? Absolutely. But that doesn't benefit the wealthy elite. There's a purpose for the lower class. Dr. Dr. Anderson told us that we were going to become uh, a permanent underclass if we weren't careful. And we're doing everything in our power to be that. And then we will uh, do what we always do, get into an emotional fit and complain about what's going on instead of taking the necessary action to change it. One of the things that my grandfather did with me at an early age, rearing me, is he didn't allow me to come to him complaining. The first question out of his mouth was, okay, what have you done to this point? I had to make an effort to solve my problem before I brought it to him. And if I couldn't solve it, then I would bring it to him and we would work on it together. But I had to still participate. And that's something we don't see here. We want them to fix it. We are trying to tantalize or touch their sense of morality. This isn't about morality. This is about power. And the quicker we really truly gain this, and I don't just mean this in a sense of awareness. I mean this really in a sense that it becomes a driving force in how we make our decisions. We're going to consistently have problems. Why? Because until we realize the only people that are going to change our situation is us, we will continuously be frustrated, disappointed, and manipulated. Because when you're expecting someone else to fix a problem that's extremely intensively pro problematic for you, you are easily manipulated by anybody that tells you they have the solution. Now, it's, it's awesome if they actually have the solution and they're actually going to work on getting that but all they're doing is getting something from you while giving you nothing further frustrating you further creating a sense of helplessness in psychology we call this learned helplessness um and, and a generation that's watching us look helpless ends up suffering for what we call vicarious learned helplessness meaning they haven't even tried they're just looking at us and saying it, it can't be done i'm watching them it doesn't work we we we, we you know we're doomed and we have a fatalist mindset in a lot of these different ways and we are going to have to overcome that we're going to have to develop a, a passion for knowledge but also a passion for engagement and application we're going to have to get from behind our computers and our devices we're going to have to put boots on the ground we're going to have to do what they did while i disagree with a lot of the philosophies 
of the civil rights movement. The one thing they did is they had a system, they had a structure that were those who were out boots on the ground, that were those who were funding the boots on the ground. There, uh, there were so many different things and so many different elements and components. Uh, if we would have actually held on and fought, that's why actually Dr. King ends up getting assassinated is because he had the greatest ability to mobilize but he was initially used to mobilize for the for the purpose of misdirection. You know, hey, we're going to integrate. We're going to be a part of them. We're fighting to make them take our money. We're fighting to literally fund their economy. And we have become a group of people who literally fund our own demise. We finance our own demise by spending billions upon billions upon billions of dollars annually into the very economy of the people we say are oppressing us. And we actually expect a different result. Instead of taking that money and saying, how can we fix ourselves? How can we create our own credit unions and banks? How can we finance our own residential development, business development, educational programs and institutions? How can we create our own businesses so that we can not only build and own our own wealth, but also offer opportunities to the underserved, the underemployed, and the unemployed uh, within our ranks? That's our responsibility. That's a capacity we once had in many different areas. Uh, and and uh, as up as late as this, uh, the early 60s. And we have declined. We look good. We know how to go out and get the symbols of success, but we don't own the wealth, so we don't own the power. We compile debt. They talk about, and I'm going to say this, and then I'm, 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 I'm going to go ahead and cut it. They talk about this $1.4 trillion in buying power, $1.4 trillion in buying power, and get you all hyped. If you were a nation, you would be the ninth richest nation in the world, uh, uh, but they're using the $1.4 trillion in the sense of owned wealth. It's not owned wealth, it's buying power, and there's a difference. It's a play on word that gets you to thinking, man, I can go out and buy some. $1.4 million, $1.4 trillion worth of stuff annually. We've got one point four. No, what you have is the vast majority of that buying power, it's credit. What does that mean? We hold the capacity to accumulate massive amounts of debt, which we have done. Um, and that debt is actually what is what's driving a significant part of the, in, in, uh, the uh, economy because we are in a debt-based economy. Uh, the dollar isn't backed by anything of value is backed by debt. Uh, they need us to spend in order for the dollar to to remain uh, viable. And so they're constantly pushing uh, and they need us to have that consumer mindset. We're not investing in ourselves. We're not building it for ourselves. We are literally financing our own demise in so many different ways. So my challenge is we need to continue to consume knowledge, but we need to apply knowledge. We need to invest in ourselves. We need to invest in programs. We need to invest in academic, educational, uh, residential, business, and so much more. And we need to start quickly. They have already implemented, and I, I warned you about this over 10 years ago, they have already implemented and are massively quickly and quickly uh, replacing us with Latinos and further making us irrelevant. And imagine what happens when they don't need us in that way. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Um, and again, if you believe in what we're doing, support our work. On that note, uh, we've got work to do. Take care. I'm out.